the untold dark secrets of fairy tale creatures revealed in 2024. In a revelation that could shatter the very foundations of bedtime stories, it turns out that fairy tale creatures are not quite the charming, benevolent beings we've been led to believe. Forget the image of a plucky little fairy fluttering around, spreading magic and joy. The truth, as uncovered in a series of clandestine investigations, suggests something far darker lurking beneath the surface. Take, for instance, the ubiquitous fairy godmother. Far from being the benevolent matron who grants wishes and ensures happy endings, evidence suggests she is, in fact, part of a shadowy syndicate known as the Enchantress League. This elite group of magical beings allegedly operates a sophisticated network of influence peddling, where wishes are not granted out of kindness, but rather as part of a complex web of favors debts, and sometimes even blackmail. The League's motto? Magic isn't free, darling. And then there are the trolls, long portrayed as slow-witted brutes living under bridges, who challenge unsuspecting travelers with riddles. A more accurate depiction might paint them as members of an ancient order of gatekeepers with an agenda far beyond mere bridge guarding. It appears that these trolls are the custodians of powerful secrets, trading in ancient knowledge and manipulating the flow of magical beings between realms. Their bridges are less architectural marvels and more portals to the unknown, with tolls paid in more than just gold. But perhaps the most unsettling discovery of all is the true nature of the happily ever after so coveted in fairy tales. It turns out, these endings are meticulously crafted illusions, maintained by an underworld of enchanted bureaucrats. These unsung creatures work tirelessly behind the scenes to rewrite narratives, erase inconvenient truths, and ensure that only the most marketable stories make it to print. The real ending, as it turns out, is more of a happy for now, until the next audit. As we pull back the curtain on these tales that have comforted generations, it becomes clear that the world of fairy tale creatures is more complicated and sinister than we ever imagined. What other dark secrets lie hidden in the enchanted forests and magical castles of our childhoods? The truth may be hard to swallow, but it's a tale worth telling. Fairy tales have long been the bedtime staple for children and the nostalgic comfort food for adults. These stories, filled with whimsical creatures, heroic deeds, and happily ever afters, are part of our collective cultural heritage. But what if these tales, passed down through generations, were merely a glossy veneer covering a much darker reality. In this investigation, we pull back the curtain on the seemingly innocent world of fairy tale creatures to reveal the unsettling truths that have been hidden from us for centuries. We've been told stories of kind-hearted fairies, benevolent witches, and loyal animal companions. But the reality is far from the sugar-coated narratives we've come to love. These creatures, it turns out, have histories, motives, and behaviors that are as complex, and at times as sinister as any humans. What we are about to explore will challenge everything you thought you knew about these beloved characters. Forget the disnified versions you've been fed. The real stories are rife with intrigue, deception, and agendas that would make even the most cynical among us shudder. Why does the fairy godmother show up just in time to save the day? What's really going on behind the scenes in the enchanted forests? And why do these tales always seem to end in such convenient resolutions? As we dig into the dark secrets of fairy tale creatures, you'll discover that the line between hero and villain, friend and foe, is not just blurred, it's practically non-existent. Prepare yourself for a journey into the twisted, shadowy world that exists beyond the pages of your favorite storybooks. This is the fairy tale you were never supposed to hear. Fairy tale creatures, those whimsical beings who flit through our childhood stories, granting wishes or spinning gold, have long been portrayed as either paragon of virtue or harmless tricksters. But what if these endearing myths were mere smokescreens, concealing darker truths that lie just beneath the surface? For centuries, we've accepted the tales of benevolent fairies, wise old wizards, and gentle giants without questioning their true nature. These creatures are typically depicted as guardians of morality, helpers in times of need, or harmless mischief makers whose worst offenses amount to a little playful deception. But history, it seems, has a way of sanitizing the past, and these stories are no exception. Take, for instance, the fairies, 
often shown as dainty, ethereal beings with a penchant for helping lost children or star-crossed lovers, the reality is far less innocent. In ancient folklore, fairies were feared as much as they were revered, known for their capricious nature and unsettling tendencies to steal children, and snare travelers in endless dances, or curse those who displeased them. Their portrayal as sparkly winged helpers is a modern-day revision, a PR campaign designed to hide their more malevolent tendencies. Then there's the case of the friendly talking animals, those helpful woodland creatures who assist protagonists in their quests. The truth is that these beings were often viewed as shapeshifters or spies in disguise, acting out their own hidden agendas. The tales that paint them as loyal companions conveniently overlook their cunning and intelligence, which were often used for purposes far removed from simple altruism. Even the iconic figure of the wise old wizard, with his flowing beard and staff, is not immune to this whitewashing. Traditionally, wizards were seen as figures of immense, dangerous power, whose allegiances were questionable at best. Their role in fairy tales has been scrubbed clean, transforming them into harmless guides, rather than the volatile, unpredictable forces they were originally feared to be. The challenge we face today is unraveling these carefully constructed myths to expose the true nature of these fairy tale creatures. This task is no small feat, as centuries of storytelling have cemented these sanitized versions into our collective consciousness. But as we peel back the layers, a more complex and, frankly, disturbing picture emerges. One that forces us to reconsider the stories we've been told and the creatures we've come to love. In the soft glow of children's bedtime stories, fairy tale creatures have always danced on the edges of our imagination. Sprites that glitter, wolves that stalk, and witches that cackle. But when you pull back the curtain, the reality of these figures is far less enchanting and more rooted in the shadows of our collective psyche. Consider the fairy godmother, that staple of wish-fulfilling fantasies. With a wave of her wand, she grants the desires of the downtrodden, turning pumpkins into carriages and rags into gowns. But scratch the surface of this benevolent matron, and you find echoes of ancient fey beings who were far from motherly. These entities, often feared in Celtic folklore, were not the benign wish of Disney's dream factory. They were fickle, dangerous, and had a penchant for abducting humans, especially children, whisking them away to the other world, where they were forced to serve or entertain the fey courts. What society remembers as a godmother was once a terror to be appeased, not trusted. Then there's the big bad wolf, a creature whose notoriety has become so ingrained in popular culture that his predatory nature is practically a punchline. Yet, in the original tales, wolves were not just cunning villains. They were symbols of the untamed, primal fear that lurked just beyond the safety of the village. The wolf's appetite wasn't just for little girls in red hoods. It was for the very essence of humanity's fragile sense of security. This fear was so palpable that it bled into the very fabric of medieval life, where wolves were hunted with a fervor bordering on religious zeal. The societal implications were clear. The wolf was the embodiment of nature's wrath, a reminder that no matter how high we built our walls, there was always something lurking, waiting to huff, puff, and blow it all down. And what of the trolls, those lumbering, dim-witted ogres that lurk under bridges, demanding tolls from passing goats. In Norse mythology, trolls were not just nuisances to be outsmarted. They were embodiments of the dangers of the unknown wilderness. They were said to kidnap children, eat wayward travelers, and wreak havoc on human settlements. The stories served as stern warnings about the perils that lay in the untamed wilds, teaching societies to fear what they couldn't control. Yet today, Trolls have been relegated to the role of internet pranksters and comical villains in animated films, their dark origins buried under layers of modern reinterpretation. As we delve deeper into these tales, it becomes clear that fairy tale creatures are more than just the whimsical creations of old storytellers. They are reflections of societal fears, moral codes, and the unknown. By softening their edges, we've transformed these creatures from cautionary figures into harmless, even lovable icons. But the question remains, what does this sanitization say about us? Are we simply whitewashing the darker parts of our collective consciousness? Or are we, perhaps, 
Too afraid to confront the shadows that still lurk within these ancient stories? The story of the Pied Piper is a haunting reminder of the consequences of broken promises. But what if the truth behind this legend is far more sinister than we've been led to believe? Recent investigations into the historical and cultural origins of this story reveal a chilling possibility. The Pied Piper was not just a fable, but a very real and very disturbing figure. While the Pied, or multicolored clothing, suggests a medieval performer, some historians believe that the Piper was actually a symbol for something far darker, a human trafficker who exploited the town's children. The evidence is compelling. Medieval records from Hamelin mention a tragic event in 1284, where 130 children disappeared without a trace. The rats, as it turns out, were a later addition to the tale, possibly invented to shift the focus away from the original horror. The Piper, as many now theorize, was likely a representation of a figure or figures who capitalized on the town's vulnerability, luring children away under the guise of music and merriment, only to sell them into slavery or worse. This revelation appends the story we've all been told, a quaint morality tale about keeping promises, and forces us to confront a much darker reality. The Pied Piper, once just a name in a children's book, now stands as a symbol of something more grotesque and terrifying, the exploitation of innocence. The unsettling truth is that the fairy tale we cherished as a simple lesson in integrity was likely rooted in a historical event that saw the loss of an entire generation of children. This raises uncomfortable questions about how many other beloved fairy tales might conceal similarly dark truths, their real meanings obscured by centuries of retelling. As this investigation reveals, the sanitized versions of these stories serve to protect us from the harsh realities they once represented. But in doing so, they also allow us to forget the darker sides of our history, the very shadows from which these tales originally emerged. The Pied Piper's legacy, now uncovered, forces us to see him not as a mere trickster wronged by ungrateful townsfolk, but as a dark reminder of the vulnerabilities that lie within every community. As we peel back the layers of the enchanting stories we've grown up with, the contrast between the comforting narratives of fairy tales and their sinister origins becomes starkly apparent. From the Pied Piper's unsettling connection to human trafficking to the predatory nature of the once-beloved Big Bad Wolf, it's clear that these tales are far from the innocent bedtime stories we've come to know. These creatures, once cloaked in the whimsy of children's books and animated films, reveal a darker history that speaks to the fears, anxieties, and harsh realities of the times they were born. The sweet-natured mermaids, for instance, were once the deadly sirens of ancient lore, luring sailors to their watery graves. Similarly, the charming and witty Puss in Boots was originally a symbol of deceit and trickery, teaching survival through cunning and manipulation rather than through noble heroics. In exploring these unsettling truths, we've uncovered a recurring theme. The sugar-coated versions of these tales have served to sanitize and simplify our understanding of human nature. The wolf is no longer just a wolf, but a warning about strangers. The mermaid isn't just a romantic figure of the sea, but a cautionary tale about the dangers lurking beneath alluring appearances. These dark secrets are not just historical curiosities. They reflect the cultural and societal contexts from which they emerged. The original tales were, in many ways, survival guides masked as entertainment, encoded with warnings about the world's dangers. Over time, as these tales were retold and adapted for softer, more palatable audiences, their grim realities were polished away, leaving behind stories that entertained but no longer warned. But now, as we've journeyed back to the roots of these tales, we are left with an unsettling understanding fairy tales were never meant to comfort. They were tools of caution, teaching lessons through fear and darkness. By revisiting these origins, we are reminded that the world isn't always as it seems, and that even the most charming tales may hide a shadowy past. In the end, the true power of fairy tales lies not just in their ability to captivate our imaginations, but also in their capacity to confront us with the darker aspects of human nature. As we've seen, the stories we tell and retell are reflections of ourselves, our histories, and our deepest fears. So the next time you encounter a seemingly innocent fairy tale, remember, there's often more lurking beneath the surface than meets the eye.
As we close the chapter on this eye-opening investigation into the dark secrets of fairy tale creatures, it's time to hear from you, the viewer. Which revelation about these beloved characters caught you off guard? Was it the Pied Piper's sinister origins, the predatory nature of the big bad wolf, or perhaps something even more unexpected? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's dive into a discussion about these tales that have been hiding in plain sight for centuries. Your perspective is invaluable in unraveling the complexities of these stories that have shaped our collective imagination. Do you believe these darker interpretations change the way we approach fairy tales? Should these creatures be viewed as cautionary symbols rather than simple entertainment? Or is there still a place for the magic and innocence we've attached to them? And if you've enjoyed this journey into the shadows of our favorite childhood stories, be sure to check out my other videos where we continue to explore the hidden truths behind popular myths, legends, and cultural phenomena. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest investigations, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Together, let's keep questioning, uncovering, and revealing the secrets that have been woven into the fabric of our cultural history. After all, the stories we thought we knew are just the beginning.